Hey guys, I want to show you how to interpret your uh, antibiotic disc diffusion results. In particular, how to read the breakpoint chart. Um, but you've got an image here in your lab showing um, the results of a, a Kirby Bauer test, right? And so uh, you can tell that what happened here was we put a lawn of bacteria on using uh, a sterile cotton swab and a culture of bacteria that had been diluted down to the same turbidity as the 0.5 McFarland standard. The lawn had been spread on in three directions, so it's nice and heavy. <clears throat> and then before the bacteria were allowed to grow, different antibiotic discs were placed all the way around it. And there are 12 of these discs using a big disc dispenser. They're nice and evenly spread out here. And then the whole plate was incubated, so the bacteria that were spread are attempting to grow, but they can only grow as close to the disc as they can tolerate that antibiotic because the antibiotic in the disc, from the moment it touches the auger, begins diffusing out. So <clears throat> out at the edges, you have it, it's very dilute, very low concentration, and really close to the disc is its highest concentration. So you can see we end up with different sized clearing zones or halos. And what you would do is you would take either a set of digital calipers or even just a millimeter ruler, and you'd lay it right across. We'll go with imipenem here, IPM. And you would lay it right across the middle here, and you would measure the, the, um, the diameter from one edge all the way across to the other edge. And we know that this particular one measured in at 13 millimeters. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to take the 13 millimeter halo that we just measured and determine whether that implies that our bacteria that were spread on this plate are susceptible to the drug, are they resistant to the drug, or are they intermediate, somewhere in between. So now what we do is we go to our antimicrobial susceptibility breakpoint chart. Okay, so antibiotic disc breakpoints is the title of the file, and you can find that on Canvas. <clears throat> and this section here shows all of what are called breakpoints. I'm going to zoom in. So we can actually see it because it's in like two point font. It's ridiculous. And what you see here is on the left hand side, you've got an antimicrobial agent, right? An antibiotic, and they're alphabetical. So we'll work our way down to imipenem in just a minute. There's an abbreviation here because if you saw on the disc over here, you can see IPM. What the heck is IPM? Well, you don't have to have them memorized, though if you do this enough, you will memorize them. Uh, and so we could look for that and find, oh, I didn't know it was imipenem, but I found IPM. That's imipenem. Great. Tells you how much antibiotic, uh, what mass of antibiotic they put in the discs. And that's important because in some cases you can get two different kinds. There's a standard. Um, trying to see if there's one here. Um, I'm not seeing any, of course. It's making a liar out of me. But there's usually a standard mass that they put in one of these. But sometimes there's a couple different options depending on the bacteria that you're uh, analyzing, let me scroll back up to the top again here so we can see the top of our, our columns, the titles of our columns. Let me let that load. There we go. <clears throat> okay, and then you can see under any given antibiotic, there are different bacteria, right? So for amoxicillin clavulanic acid, uh, that combination, which we'll talk about uh, later, it's called augmentin most often. Um, you've got one set of breakpoints over here. These are your breakpoints for the Enterobacteriaceae, right? That's E. coli and very close relatives of E. coli. But you've got a different set of breakpoints for Staphylococci and Haemophilus, meaning that this combination of amoxicillin with clavulanic acid is most often used for these three groups, and they're going to behave differently, and we're going to interpret the diameter of that halo differently. So you do need to know something about your organism to be able to do this. It can't be a complete unknown where you won't be able to actually interpret your results. And then over here, we've got zone diameter interpretive standards. These are the breakpoints, meaning if we were using this amdenocillin, uh, less than or equal to 15 millimeters diameter, and we're calling it resistant. Greater than or equal to 16 millimeters, and we're calling it susceptible. And these terms, resistant and susceptible, really are based on empirical evidence, right? Experience with how frequently the drug works when we see halos at these size. How frequently it works in a live patient when we see halos these size. Uh, amicacin has 14 as its resistant breakpoint. It has 17 as its susceptible. 
and everything in between, 15 or 16, they call it intermediate, meaning sometimes it works on the patient, sometimes it doesn't. It's not necessarily your best choice if you have other options because it's risky. If, however, it's 17 or above, the majority of the time the bacteria are susceptible and a, and a standard dosing regimen, which you can get from your, uh, your Sanford guide, a standard dosing regimen is going to be effective. So let's go ahead and find our imipenem. And don't worry about these off to the right here. These are standards for quality control, which we didn't do for our experiment. But in a typical clinical lab, you'd have standards for quality control. So we just need this section right here. So let's find imipenem. I'm just going to keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, now i got to move over. E-F-G-H-I-J-K, H-I-J-K, haha, imipenem. See, if I didn't know that IPM was imipenem, I could just look for that abbreviation. I'd say, oh, that was imipenem. And you can see there's one set of breakpoints for the Enterobacteriaceae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Acinetobacter, or any of the Staphylococci. And there's a separate one for Haemophilus. Okay, so for Haemophilus, um, which is primarily Haemophilus influenzae, um, for a Haemophilus infection, if you really needed to use imipenem, you would use 16 as your breakpoint, right? Greater than or equal to 16, and you're going to use it. Anything less than that, forget about it. There's either no data or it's, uh, it's too risky. But uh, our photo, our, our data back here, you're told is E. coli, and E. coli is in the Enterobacteriaceae family, which means we're going to use this set of breakpoints. Thir equal to or less than 13 is resistant. Greater than or equal to 16 is susceptible. What was ours? Here was our diameter. We measured it. We got 13 millimeters. Equal to or less than 13 is resistant. And so we would actually go back to this chart here, and under susceptibility, we would put an R for resistant. Make sense? That's how you're going to interpret it. And then you're going to work through the remaining 11 antibiotics here. And you're going to look them up on the chart. You're going to compare the diameter of the halo here to the breakpoints, keeping in mind Enterobacteriaceae is the category of which breakpoints you want to be using. And you're going to fill in S, I, or R for all of these. And you've got some questions to answer about that. I hope that was helpful. Um, as always, just email me if you have any questions. Or you can, um, you can set up Zoom office hours. You can show up to our Monday Zoom office hours. Or you can come on Wednesday to class. And actually, you can ask questions at the very beginning of class before we get started on our activity. And I'll help you out then.